Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you a small olive nymph using lively legs. Now I've used these before and this time it's I'm going to use them a little different. I'm going to tie them in by the tip but I'm going to put them in backwards and flip them over. And I don't know if it's easier. It's kind of a cool way to do it on these smaller flies maybe without a bead. I'm going to do this one on a Mustad size 16. This is a heavy wet fly hook, kind of short shanked. It's, it's perfect for these little nymphs. So there's a picture of our lively legs, size 16 and olive. And you'll see there are three pair on there, but we're only going to use two. This is a uh, feather from a pheasant tail. It's been dyed yellow. I'm going to use that for my tail here. I'm going to use a piece of extra small black wire as a rib a section of this goose quill for the um, wing case, a little olive dubbing, and then hold it all together with some black ADOT uni thread. So I've got that, that heavy little short hook in the vise, and we'll pinch the tip in place of the thread and get started. I'm going to hang around here at the front to make sure I close that gap. These, these hooks, the uh, the eye isn't perfectly closed, or at least there's a sharp edge there. So you want to make sure you take a few extra wraps. Um, different brands of hooks I've noticed that on. And it takes a couple of thread wraps just to close it off and protect your tippet uh, when the time comes. So here's a little section, probably about eight fibers uh, from that pheasant tail feather. That's one of the shorter uh, pheasant tail feathers. They're, it's mottled. This one's dyed yellow, and I found this a good way to use it. When you're fishing these, they all kind of wash together. I think the uh, the real tails on, on the actual nymphs kind of wash together sometimes, too. So there I'm showing you a section of that goose quill. And I made it the width of the hook gap. And I'm almost going to tie it in like you would a quill section for a wing. I'm, I've kind of experimented a little bit and come up with that technique. If you saw, it's almost a pinch wrap. Um, but I let it roll over a little bit. It pinches together right up behind the eye. But it it doesn't get creased. and uh, or You want to be careful and try not to let it get creased. So that when you fold it back over, it's nice and smooth. I have the shiny side of that goose quill up. So when I fold it back over, um, I don't know. I, I like to look at the fuzzy side when I fold it back. Of course, I cover it with the head cement anyways. So I parked my thread in the middle, and we're going to tie in that extra small black wire. And I did some of these with uh, gold wire. I think originally I was just making kind of a hare's ear nymph. And, uh, but I think if I'm going to try to make this look like an olive nymph, um, the black wire adds something, some segmentation. And later in the year, when the water's clear, I'm not sure you want all that shiny stuff anyway. So it's part of why I do some of these uh, without a copper bead or uh, to minimize the uh, anything that might spook fish. So here we're adding some rabbit dubbing. Kind of picked out a few of the guard hairs as I went. Make sure I have a nice small noodle. And I'm going to work my way to the back and get started. So I kind of wrap back and then cross over it. That'll lock that in place. And then just work on building a nice, smooth, tapered body. And I'm certainly going to run out of dubbing. So I'll come back and add a little more dubbing. I'm just kind of pinching uh, little pinches of that dubbing out of the the little tuft that I pulled out of the dis or the box, I guess, the dispenser. And I've heard, you know, you lay it parallel and you kind of twist them. Um, I kind of lay it at a couple degree angle. So that way when I twist, it wraps. I make sure it wraps around. So we have a nice body, or at least I think so. And we'll get started with the rib. So I'm ribbing in the same direction as the fur. I think I'd rather have my rib sink in a little bit in this case than stick out. You know, a lot of these nymphs have uh, gills and some softness to them. And if you cross over, you, you get a ribbed effect, but uh, the rib's more pronounced than the, uh, than the dubbing. 
So I'm going to come right back up behind the eye and park my thread there. And that's where I'm going to tie in the uh, my lively legs. And here I'm snipping off that, that last pair. They come with three. And uh, I don't know. These are size 16. That's a size 16 hook. It's, it's kind of short, but... Um, two's plenty. I've mentioned this before and people make jokes, but fish can't count. And they see legs and they see the same shape. And to be honest, this fly, in, especially in the darker colors, kind of imitates those clingers that you find stuck to the bottom of the rocks where I fish as well. So this one's kind of double duty. Um, either way, it's fooled a few fish already uh, as the season wore on. So there we have that tied in by the tip. And I want to dub my thread again, keep this nice and firm and thin. It's the boring part, right? If you had a fast forward button and you're watching this, this is where you hit it. Not that I'm encouraging you to do that, although I don't, I'm not monetized and um, this is more just sharing ideas rather than worrying about making a few shekels. So there I'm filling in the thorax. It's like level now, but I want it to be a little bit bulbous. So I'm going to add some more dubbing. And I like this shade of green. It's a little on the light side, but when it's wet, it darkens up. So let's see what that does. We'll work our way back forward. Make that a little bit of a, I don't know, reverse. I guess that's not thin enough to be a carrot. It's kind of bulbous and kind of tapered on each end. Maybe a little football shape there. And I'm going to use a dubbed thread to hold the legs down and the wing case. So let's fold those legs back over. I kind of pull them and twist them toward me a little bit. And you can fiddle with them, get them, get them where you want them. That one wrap should hold. We're going to do a few more wraps around the wing case, so nothing's going to come loose. And it's about here. I'm, I'm going to show you this. So I ran out of dubbing. And I want to come up and finish around the head, but you'll see that black thread. So I'm going to unwrap, add a little more dubbing, just enough to get me an extra wrap around the wing case, and then make it up to the eye, just behind the eye. So that ought to do it. I come over, cross over underneath. And I can see my dubbing there, but once I get it kind of pinned down, it blends in pretty well, and I'm ready to whip finish. So I'll leave it in this position. You can see that. I can see it pretty well, and I can get... I'm going to do five or six wraps here. I got a little fuzz in the way, so I wanted to use an extra wrap or two. So here, we'll get a hold of the thread, pull it tight. And we'll slice that excess thread off. So I have that stub of wing case sticking out the back. And um, I'm going to split it with a needle right down the middle. And I don't think I do a good job of showing this. And I didn't quite do it here. But if you cut it straight across now, it'll actually have uh, a shape on each one of those little flaps that kind of looks like wing buds. Not sure any of that matters. Um, some of them, when I'm done snipping, look a little better than others. Another point here to make is, and I should have said it sooner, but I did tie that uh, goose quill in by its tip. So, and here the uh, that goose quill, quill wanted to split a little bit. You could leave it split. It would kind of look like an emerger, and it would show through that that all of um, uh, lively legs. But uh, in this case, I kind of pushed it back together, come in with a drop of head cement, 
Um, I'm using Sally Hansen's Hard as Nails. Let that soak in a little bit, and you can see that little crease right in there. I want to get a little more um, head cement and kind of make sure I get something in against those threads near the hook just to help keep that whip finish from coming loose. And since I did it on one side, I'll go ahead and do it on the other side. And that's the fly. It's got a nice little bulbous head. Like I said, it could pass for an olive. It could pass for one of those clingers. Change the colors, change the sizes. Um, if you have smaller, lively legs, want to make a smaller version, that would work as well. This isn't weighted. I like to use split shots. Um, I hope this helps you out. I hope it puts a few fish in your net. And if you want to learn more about me, look me up on Amazon. And until next time, be safe.